This is every TV, dear viewers. Welcome to English News Broadcast with me, your reporter, Bersabe Tahle. Let's start with the major headlines for today. Contribution by nationals inside and abroad to augment Maldives Trust Fund. Vocational training conducted to use in a city. Floods killed 777 people in Pakistan. And China launches new satellites into space. On your local news, Eritrean nationals inside the country and abroad contributed about 14,000 euros, $3,660 and 36,000 nakhva towards augmenting the Martyrs Trust Fund and in support of families of Martyrs and the National Association of Eritrean War Disabled Veterans. According to the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare, 26 nationals in the Netherlands contributed 5,220 euros and $700 in support of 14 families of Mardis. 20 June Mardis Association in Aschaffenburg, Germany, 2,800 euros in support of four families of Mardis. A national in Malawi, 1,420 euros in support of two families of Mardis. Members of the National Union of Eritrean Women in Giesen, 1,420 euros in support of two families of Mardis. And Hyundai Cultural Group in Giesen contributed 1,420 in support of two families of Mardis. A national in Asmara who wants to remain anonymous contributed 36,000 nafa in support of three families of Mardis. And a national in Switzerland contributed 300 euros additional support to two families of Mardis that he previously assumed the responsibility to support. In the same vein, Eritrean community in Kansas, the U.S., and Orthodox Tawahado Church in Mannheim, Germany, contributed $1,100 and €300, Euros, respectively, towards augmenting the National Trust Fund. Likewise, Eritrean women in Wienheim, Germany, contributed €2,500 in support of the National Association of Eritrean War Disabled Veterans. The National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students Branch in the Southern Red Sea region organized vocational training to use in the port city of Asab. The training included computer technology, tailoring, as well as freezer air condition maintenance, indicating that already 70 youth have become beneficiaries of the training program. Mr. Usman Abdul Qadir, head of the union branch in the region, said that similar training programs will be organized in all subzones of the region. Pointing out that the objective of the training was to develop the vocational capacity and creativity of the youth, Mr. Usman called on the trainees to apply the training they were provided in improving their livelihoods. On your last local news, the residents of Nafa Subzone, in cooperation with government employees and students of the Nafa Social Science School, have conducted commendable soil and water conservation activities aimed at redressing the environment. According to the head of Ministry of Agriculture, branch in the subzone, Mr. Mohammed Saleh Mohammed Ali, the popular campaign included construction of terraces and water diversion schemes and that 5,000 meters of terraces have been constructed and 2,800 cubic meters of water diversion schemes renovated and 26,000 holes prepared for planting tree seedlings. Mr. Mohammed Saleh also said that 63,000 tree seedlings have been planted at public institutions and private residential houses. In the same vein, Mr. Fasahat Yintakye, coordinator of the Student Summer Work Program, reported that 15,000 meters of terraces have been constructed and 16,000 meters of terraces have been renovated through the Summer Work Program. That was domestic news, dear viewers. Do stay for the international report after the short break. Welcome back. 
flash floods caused by abnormally heavy monsoon trains have killed at least 777 people across Pakistan over the last two months and have displaced more than 300,000 people, according to officials. According to the National Disaster Management Authority, rescuers helped by troops are racing against time to evacuate thousands of marooned people. Since June 14, rain and flooding have affected 1.8 million people, and more than 300,000 of them were still living in relief camps across the country. About 300 of the 777 deaths have been reported since the start of August. Floods have also damaged nearly 60,000 homes across Pakistan, in addition to washing away roads and damaging bridges. Authorities are setting up more relief and medical camps in remote areas in flood-hit southwestern Balochistan, southern Sindh and eastern Punjab provinces, where there has been significant damage. Videos on social media showed residents rushing for cover as floodwaters arrived without warning in towns and villages. Officials said they had dispatched food, tents and other essential items to affected areas. However, local reports suggest that many people were still waiting for aid in flood-hit regions. On today's last news, China has successfully launched today, 23 August, a new satellite into space from the Xichen Satellite Launch Center in southwest China's Sichuan province. The Chuangxin-16 satellite, developed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, was launched at 10.36 a.m. Beijing time by Kuaizhou 1A carrier rocket and entered the planned orbit successfully. The satellite will mainly be used for scientific experiments and verification of new technologies. The launch was the 16th mission by Kuaizhou 1A series rockets. You're still watching every TV, dear viewers, and now recap of today's major headlines. Contribution by nationals inside and abroad to augment Marty's trust fund. Vocational training conducted to use in Asif City. Floods kill 777 people in Pakistan. And China launches new satellites into space. That was it for today, dear viewers. Thanks for watching and have a good one.